And the federal government says those criticizing the National Water Resources Bill 2020 uh, currently before the National Assembly are ill-informed. The Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, said this at a press conference he addressed with the Minister of Water Resources, Suleiman Adamu in Abuja. Mohammed said those condemning the bill either have not read it or do not understand its uh, provisions. He said the bill was for the good of the nation and has no hidden agenda whatsoever. He used this opportunity to appeal to Nigerians to avail themselves of the provisions of the bill to avoid being misled by those who have chosen to politicize it. He reiterated that the bill is for the good of the nation and has no hidden agenda whatsoever and when passed will provide for the enhancement of the Nigeria water sector in line with global best practices. And to help us analyze, this is a legal practitioner, Kissinger Ikoku. Thank you for joining us. My, uh, thank you for having me. Uh, let us first start with um, your take on the water bill. Is it something that you welcome? Um, uh, it is worth debating, but we should uh, understand the time and the season. Um, the federal government, I think it's unfortunate for the public to to the word um, no impact on the water resources bill. That means uh, the public officer does not understand that uh, himself and the government are sitting on the mandate of the people. He should be looking at what is the view of the majority of the people. If the view of the majority of the people is that this water resources bill is not our priority at this time, then Mr. Lai Mohammed does not have the right to begin to impose it on the people to say it must be now. Let us put it in proper perspective. There is a trust issue in this matter. I think there is a trust issue, and we must understand it. First, the government said, oh, this bill didn't start with us, it started with the Eighth Assembly. We understand the Electoral Act started with the Eighth Assembly. This bill didn't pass the true chambers of the National Assembly. It failed at the Senate. The Electoral Act Amendment Bill was passed by the two chambers of the National Assembly, was sent to the president for assent. The president withheld his assent on seeking um, uh, corrections in some certain areas. Those corrections were done and were sent back to the president. The president now said, oh, I'm not going to sign it as at November 2019 because elections were very close. And up till now, the APC administration of President Buhari has not deemed it necessary to pick up the Electoral Amendment, Electoral Act Amendment Bill to sign it to make the card reader. Remember, President Buhari was a victim of electoral malpractice at the time he cried. Till that, we are using the Electoral Act 2010, and President Buhari does not see any compulsion to get it amended. But they have picked up the water resources bill, and one excuse they give is that the process started under the Eighth Assembly, headed by um, uh, Senior President uh, um, um, uh, Now, you see the importance. Which one is more important? Is it the Electoral Act Amendment Bill or the Water Resources Bill? Now, Mr. Lai Mohammed has said we have no option. It is a must. Now, understand it. There is a trust issue in this matter. There is, this is, remember, this is a government that told us, this is a government that told us at a certain stage, they said we needed a cattle colony. The letter came back with Ruga. The Ruga created a lot of problems pre-2019 election. Governors were being cajoled who will give land for Ruga or who will not give land for Ruga. And we came after it till death. If you look at it, the northern part of the country have more arable land, land for grazing. Till date, no state in the north has, planned, has, has created a colony for Ruga. So you see that those who criticize the Ruga have a good reason to say this is for land acquisition. All right. uh, That's oh, south. Yeah, hold because on. Let, let, let's... It, no, there, there is no prototype of Ruga in the north. Kindly hold on, sir. Now the water resources bill. Yeah, kindly hold on. I, I, don't, I don't want us to, to divert so into a Let different conversation. Some stakeholders have, have raised genuine demands, genuine questions. It is for a government to listen to them and listen to what they are saying. For instance, what hold on, hold on, please. Um, at this stage of Mr. Ikoko, can you, can you hold on, please? 
Um, so we don't divert into a different conversation um, um, and um, st stay on track. Um, but you, you can still go on. But I want you to then address, you know, the minister, um, uh, Lai Mohammed, saying that critics of the bill are misinformed. Um, it was also one of the stories in the news this morning saying that they're only taking advantage of the access to the media uh, to criticize the bill. What do you think he means by that? And I think he's been mischievous. That is what I've addressed. I've said he's been insensitive to the citizens who elected the government which he is serving because the citizens are raising genuine concerns about the bill, especially at this time, considering the reasons for we have known uh, for this government protection and all those things, for people to lose access to their water resources. Let me give you an instance. The National Assembly has no reason in this age of our democracy to be legislating over boreholes, over approval for boreholes. They said the legislation is for water resources that goes across interstate. Why are they not legislating? For boreholes. There are provisions dealing with boreholes for approvals for boreholes. The National Assembly have no business to legislate about boreholes. It should be, for all I am concerned, to the state governments. There should be no reason a National Assembly Commission will not come to my house and knock and say, hey, I need an approval to do a borehole, or they want to regulate the way I have a borehole in my house for a government that is supposed to create portable water for me as a citizen, but I failed to do so. So you see, there are genuine demands that people will lose their rights to their lands because there are territorial limits. And what are we asking? At this time, for what we know about this government, there is trust issues. And we are saying no to this water resources bill, even if we are going to look into it. There right. are genuine reasons why we need to oppose it under the Buhari administration. Okay. And, and you, you also mentioned the... Uh... Uh, National Assembly, and so I'm going to go into that. Um, one wonders, uh, with this established uh, position of government and the seeming cordial relationship with the current National Assembly, what are the chances that this bill will, will sail through the House this time? Yes, the, I think the enlightenment is enough to defeat whatever purpose uh, they want to achieve with this bill. Let me tell you totally, the bill is not totally bad. The bill is not totally bad. But there are um, areas and segments of the discourse of this bill which we feel should not go with this administration because this administration has not been sincere on some certain issues dealing on the treatment of, uh, um, uh, of the armed uh, herdsmen clash, clashes all over the country and how it is affecting the farmers and owners of land in their places. And this government must appreciate that, that there, there, there is, that is that discontentment. There is that, that, um, that uh, suspicion whenever it's coming. That is the reason we rejected the RUCA. That is the reason, again, this one is coming, giving a territorial limit to people who cannot own land to water resources and all that. So we are not saying everything about the law is wrong, but it should be stepped down now. We don't trust this government, and we will oppose it with every bit, every strength, in our in, uh, every atom of strength we have. Uh, do you, so do that's you, the enlightenment. It do, will you go feel, do you feel Nigerians across the country are aware um, of this bill and of the details of the bill that you don't agree with? Do you feel like a large number of Nigerians are you know, properly informed about this bill? The enlightenment is on. The citizens are becoming aware the nation are becoming awoken, just like we have said, I, like I gave in my introductory, uh, what, why is it, look at the words he used, no going back on the water resources bill. Why is it our priority at now? For me, our priority is the Electoral Act amendment, which have been passed. This one have, didn't even pass at the Eta Assembly. They should bring that up. Why is this one, why are they forcing it on our neck? So we are saying they should stand it down for very obvious reasons. We have raised genuine demands. And if this government said they were elected by the people, they should listen to the people. We are saying no to those water resources amendment bill, at least for now. And lastly, before you go, I want to quickly ask about um, uh, town hall meetings with um, members of the National Assembly, um, about uh, public hearings and the likes um, with issues like this. Um, do you feel like the people were carried along in any way um, before this bill got this far? 
We do nobody has been carried along. Like just like their excuse, their excuse is oh the work was done by the eighth assembly. Oh, we just carried along from where the eighth assembly stopped, and we must pass it now. And we are saying no. Every stakeholder must have a contribution to make about this bill. Every citizen, every segment of the Nigerian society must have a stake. We must look at it. We must make our contribution, even at the civil society level, before this bill can pass. Nobody should use the word that it is uh, no going back. It must be. No, everybody must accept it. That's wrong. And it is also wrong to say we are being mischievous for our genuine concerns. This is a bill of the National Assembly. This is a government that was elected by the people. They must listen to the people. They must come down and let the people before we move forward. Kesinja Ikoku, thank you so much for joining us and being a part of this conversation. Thank you for having me once again. God bless you.